Bethany's encounter is a strange one. Bethany lives in Western North Carolina and enjoys hiking in the woods or walking around with her dog, Bella. She says she has always felt at one with nature and loved animals, so she was surprised at what had happened to her. Bethany was walking Bella at a local park early in the morning, around 7.30, and they were on the trail that runs along the river. All of a sudden, Bethany felt like something was watching her. She turned and looked straight up into the trees and saw a man, or what she thought was a man, sitting high up perched on a branch. She thought he must have been a park employee watching out for people and animals using the trail. She thought he was about 15 or so feet up in the tree and must have climbed up there to watch over the trail. Don't get me wrong, she thought this was very bizarre. And so she started to walk toward him to get a better look because of how strange this all is. And as she gets closer, she realized that he wasn't wearing a uniform, but in fact was naked. Bethany said she was about 10 feet away from the tree when she noticed he had no clothes and that it was strange that he would climb up a tree without anything on. From that distance though, and as she closed it in, she could see that his body was actually covered in thick hair. His face was now vaguely human, but she could make out he had a snout and his eyes were very large and were almost yellowish and he was kind of leaning forward looking at her. She was now frozen in place, couldn't even let go of Bella's leash to get her phone out to take a picture. She thought surely somebody else must be watching this because he was so exposed up in the tree, but nobody else was around. He or it leaned forward, dropped down from the tree, landing in front of her on all fours. She dropped Bella's leash and Bella suddenly bolted off, ran across the field and sat down somewhere else. Bethany said that she couldn't take her eyes off this thing. It looked at her for a moment, then leaned down and strategically began sniffing around her. It then stood up and disappeared off right through the tree line. She just collapsed right there because she was so stunned thinking, did that just happen? Did I just see that? And after a few moments, Bella came back over to her completely terrified. She had no choice but to go to her car where she sat there for a while because she was so shaken up. She then decided she wanted to go back to that location to see if she could find anything that might prove that that wasn't some hallucination. She explained that when she got back to the spot, looking up into the tree and looking around for any evidence, there was nothing. No torn off limbs, no tracks, or any other signs that somebody had even been there like what had just happened but she did see some hair that looked strange. As she was kind of scanning, looking around and feeling for anything strange, she began to see this shape open up in the sky near her. And she described it being a portal where two entities came out. One of which she described looking like an older man in long white flowing robes that appeared translucent. While another looked to be a similar version of the creature she had just seen jumping out of the tree and disappearing. She immediately thought, there's no way this is happening, I must be seeing things. The older looking being had a device in its hand that lit up as he began walking toward her. Now, not only is she seeing this, but she notices that this being also has six fingers, which is an interesting note. As he or it got closer to her, the device began changing in color. And she noticed that the animal creature, whatever you want to call it, would turn in the direction the man would point the device in. It was like it was enticed or watching a magic trick. It was amazing and frightening at the same time, she describes. The man pointed the device in her direction and began to speak to her telepathically. She could not understand the words he was saying aloud, and then the device began to hum at a very low frequency, and she felt paralyzed. She watched as this levitating old man being moved around her while pointing this device in multiple directions, going on and talking to her in a language telepathically she could not understand. Until, at one point, it began to speak English and said, do not be afraid of us, we mean you no harm. The being and creature then began to move and levitate back towards the portal where it closed up. The man and the being, by some unseen force, were now being pulled back towards the portal about six feet off the ground. And that's when she realized too, that she had now been lifted off the ground 
probably by that device this being had and was now slowly being pulled towards this portal opening with them. She found herself completely unable to move her arms or legs. She tried to scream, but her mouth would not work. She was just floating there, limp in the air, moving ever so slowly, getting closer and closer to this ripple in the air. It almost seemed to glimmer and give off a silvery glow alongside the outer edges as the closer she got. And as she was about to enter this portal, she said that from inside she could see a dark, cavernous hallway with other disgusting, grotesque beings. Upon entering, it would seem like she could see far away and there were many other beings in the distance. And she could see the area they were walking through and it was worse than what she thought. The man or being, whatever he was, was beckoning her to follow him inside this portal of some kind. She then heard Bella barking aggressively and freaking out, which she was then dropped back to the ground and the portal instantaneously closed. She said she could hear Bella cowering and scared out of her mind, and by the time she had dropped to the ground, she ran back to her car without a second thought. When she got back there, she realized that her clock read 4.30. Somehow, she had been at the park for over eight hours. She swears she had thought they had been there for only about an hour when this event happened, so where did all the time go? And before she knew it, she realized Bella was not with her. She could not leave without her. So she gets out of the car again and begins to frantically call for Bella. In the height of the entire situation, she must have not realized that Bella either ran off or worse. She says that she did not come back or want to go back to the area where this portal opened up, whatever you want to call it, but she remembered that the last place she saw Bella was right then and there. So Bethany goes on to say that Bella is the love of her life and could not just leave her there. So Bethany began to go back to where this all happened, where she had saw this being in the portal, and she had said that as she made it back to this spot, she began having these vivid hallucinations, like real-life dreams of this same old man being pointing his finger at her with a device in his hand, causing her to weaken, like the life force was being drained out of her body, telling her telepathically, go now, do not come back, Bella is with us. The next thing she remembers is sitting in her car in the driveway of her home. She does not remember driving home, and her lovely Bella is now not with her. She kept thinking, how did I get home? How did I get home so fast? Why don't I have Bella? At this point in her story, Bethany swears she was too terrified to go back to that park to look for Bella, which by the way, she never mentioned at the exact national park that this happened. She could not go back to the park after what had just occurred. And since that day, Bethany and her husband have looked for Bella everywhere, but she is gone. Bethany says of Bella, she was my angel, my best friend, I don't know what happened to her, but I'm convinced those beings took her. She goes on to say that my husband thinks I'm crazy and that there's no way that some other beings could take a dog. I think it was supernatural, but he's not convinced of my story. Bella also had a collar and a tag with the name and number, so if anybody happens to find her, they would know how to contact me. I have looked all over the neighborhood for her and asked everyone I saw, but no one has seen her. She was a lab husky mix, so she would be hard to miss. Bella was loved by everybody who met her, and she can't believe that she is gone. Bethany still looks for her everywhere she goes and keeps hoping she'll one day show up. And she asks, what happened? What was the other being? Why did she go missing for eight hours and how did she get back home? She has no explanation for any of this, and the only thing that even makes remote sense is that it had to have been supernatural.